This is an audio mixer by Fifine and I've seen a lot of content on this recently and people are saying that it's a great replacement or an alternative for like a GoXLR. However, this only costs around $50, so is it going to hold up against something that costs three to five times the amount? This is the Fafine SC3 and it's an entry level audio mixer coming in at around $50. It has XLR inputs for 48 volt phantom power for condenser and dynamic microphones. You get a couple of different inputs and outputs on the back, all of which are controlled by faders with individual mute buttons. It has different voice effects as well as auto tune built into it. And finally, something you'll like is the fact that it's powered by USB C, so you can use it with your PC, console, or even create content using your phone. Before we get started though, I will say that Fifine did send out the mixer for me to check out and make a review and stuff, but they haven't paid me or anything, so all the opinions in this video are going to be my own. So what do you actually get in the box of $50? Well, you get the item itself, the SC3 mixer, you also get a cable, a USB-C one for connecting to your PC, and finally a TRS to TRRS cable. First impressions of this thing though are, well, it feels like it's $50 or so, it's very plasticky, it's kind of light, and well, there's even spelling mistakes on it, because as you can see, it says female instead of female. However, let's be honest, this is kind of not a deal breaker because this type of thing is going to be living on your desk anyway. It's not going to be moving around much. And well, the main thing is, does it sound good and have features that you're actually going to use? So as you can see in here, I've changed to a different microphone right now. And that's mostly because, well, on the box and in the like specs and stuff, the Fifi mix is supposed to have about 50 decibels of gain at the high end. And that's not quite enough to power my SM7B. I will try it out later on, but I wanted you guys to hear what it sounds like with like a budget setup. So using the AMA, which cost around like 60, 65 pounds, dollars, whatever, around that range anyway. So these two put together quite well. And as you can hear, it sounds okay. And I'm not even using that much power to power this thing. Anyway, let me show you all the buttons and stuff on this mixer and what they actually do. Starting at this top left-hand side, which is the 48 volt phantom power button. So if you're using a condenser microphone, you'll need to have that turned on for it to actually work. Whereas I'm using a dynamic microphone currently, so I don't need it turned on and it works perfectly fine. Next, we've got this button, which is the light and it's going to change our RGB. So you can cycle through like five or ten different colors or you can do what i have it on currently and leave it as uh, unicorn vomit so we've got this electric button even though i don't know why it's called electric but this button is actually for auto tune so you can change the pitch of your voice or you can do your favorite t-pain impression and stuff like and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of vocal effects though and stuff, we've got this voice changer button which does exactly what it says in the tin, it changes your voice to sound like something else. So we've got six different sound effects on this actual mixer, the first of which is male I assume, I don't know what that's gonna do, maybe mix my voice a little bit deeper. Female, or female, I assume, it's just spelt wrong in my mixer for some reason. And then we've got baby, baby, baby. And finally. This is Elder. I'm old! Let's be honest, it's not exactly the best vocal effects you've ever heard, but the whole mix is like, what, $50 or so? So getting in mic input with effects that you can use on live streams or in YouTube videos for a bit of fun is, well, it's worth it. And the last four buttons are custom buttons, even though they should be really named sample pads or sample buttons instead. And these ones are used in a way that you can record a sound and then play it back later on when you need to. And all you have to do is to hold the button down and then record exactly what you want to say. Test, test, test 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 and let go and then when you press it again test 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 it plays that sound back to you and then we've got a whole bunch of mute buttons for the different inputs and outputs on this thing so we've got a microphone mute a line in mute a headphone mic monitor though which obviously mutes the microphone to your headphones but i believe that the headphone mic monitor fader volume thing here controls both the volume of your pc and the volume of the microphone in your headphones which means that you can't separate the two so if you want to have like a loud pc sound but quiet mic monitoring or vice versa you can't really do that it's basically going to be the same volume for both things at the same time next we really have to talk about all the io and stuff that's on the back of this mixer as well as how it controls the sound and stuff because currently well as you can see ooh, we've got usb c which is for connecting to your pc and also so i can hear what's going on on my pc and then you've got a line out a headphone a line in for hearing what you connect to this and then also you've got a headset and an xlr input which means that you can connect different types of microphones depending on what you want to record with so great all of which is obviously controlled with the faders and the mute buttons and stuff on the actual mixer but there's still one fader one button that's kind of missing which i would have liked to have seen in this and that is well the actual game fader 
per se or the pc volume fader because well you've got the mic volume which obviously changes how loud or quiet your microphone is you've got the line in the headphone one does change the volume of your pc but it only changes the volume in your headphones it doesn't physically change the volume for the output which is a little bit of a downside type thing because it means that you physically have to change the volume either on the pc in obs or something else it's very hard to just quickly change the volume on the fly like you would with something like a go xlr or a beacon mix or like a stream deck or something instead as you've heard throughout this entire video this five fine mixer with this am8 microphone actually sounds pretty decent and that's because the am8 doesn't actually need that much power or that much gain to sound good but what happens if i take a high-end microphone like this short sm7b and I attach it to the five fine mixer instead can you tell the difference i realized as terrifying and as painful as reality can be it's also the only place where you can find true happiness i realized as terrifying and as painful as reality can be it's also the only place where you can find true happiness I'm going to assume that if you have half decent speakers or are listening with headphones, you can probably tell there's a massive difference in quality between those two recordings. And clearly the first recording is the higher quality one. That's the GoXLR. And you might be able to hear my fans and stuff in the background, but there's no hiss or hum or just horrible glitchiness happening behind the actual audio where the FiFi mixer just doesn't have enough preamp power for a microphone like this. So I had to max out the actual fader as well as boost it a little bit in post. And then you end up with a horrible audio quality sound like that to be fair though the fi fi mixer isn't really designed to get a microphone like this because well if you can afford a microphone like this you should be buying a better interface to go with it overall though i actually think the fi fi mixer is a decent quality interface as long as you get a microphone that doesn't require a ton of like gain because you've been listening to it the whole th way through this video and you've been using it with that put it over there now but the am8 microphone is actually a, a decent pairing but my problem is if you're buying the fi fi mixer you're spending like 50 60 dollars on it but then you've got to buy an am8 and then that's going to be like another 60 70 dollars or so and then put that together and you're at like 120 130 dollars and if you're in that price range it's not too far of a jump to get a different usb mic something along the lines of well the elgato microphones this is the wave three but they do the wave one and wave three they're both between 100 150 dollars or so and they come with software called wavelink and that allows you to split everything up so your mic can go to discord or in-game chat and then everything else just stays on your stream or in your recording where other people won't hear it that alone got me thinking that this is a much better suited audio interface for someone who just creates content by themselves whether they're like someone who creates let's plays on youtube or they do podcasts and stuff it's not exactly ideal for a, a, someone who live streams unless you're going to use this as just a glorified microphone interface and then do all your audio routing through something like um voice meter or maybe like the new steel series like sona software instead which can actually like split audio up properly and send it to where you need it to go saying that though the actual mixer isn't a bad choice really it's only 50 dollars. it has like a bunch of effects and voice changer stuff in there which is fun to use it's just obviously not perfect and it's definitely not a replacement for the go xlr but i do think it's useful for certain creators if you're someone who streams from a console or from tiktok amazing choice because both of those have very limited like functionality for streaming and things like that so a five fine mixer would allow you to have a good quality microphone as well as include things like background music or other types of sounds or whatever and you can actually add a lot of functionality and fun to otherwise stale and boring streams especially as this connects to your phone and it's rare that you see a high quality TikTok stream. Personally, I don't think I would buy this mixer, but that's only because I own a whole bunch of like higher end equipment. But if you're a beginner, this might be a great choice for you, but only you can really decide that. If this video was useful for you though, remember to give it a like down below. If you've got any questions, leave me some comments. I'll try and reply to them and check out some other audio tips videos wherever they appear. I always forget which side they're on and I will see you all in the next one.